Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. So today what I have for you is the top 10 skills for SHTF or Teotihuacan or prepping, disaster preparedness, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, I, I talked a little bit about uh, some of the training that I thought folks should get in a video not long ago. And um, this may somewhat parallel that video. Um, but I think these are things that, you know, that you guys should focus on learning now while we can before anything happens. Um, but honestly, even if nothing ever does happen, all these things are all great things to, um, to know, to use, to, you know, just skills to have. So I was just going to just kind of run down a list here real quick. They're really not in any particular order because at any different point, any one of these could, you know, could be really important, you know? Um, so the first one is first aid, obviously, um, you know, having medical knowledge and all that kind of stuff is, is really important. And this is one of those items I think you should get some hands-on training. There's definitely a lot of good, uh, information online on first aid as well. Um, but, um, spending some time developing a good first aid kit and, you know, um, learning how to use it is, is important. All right. Number two is self-defense and martial arts. Um, you know, the cool thing about learning, uh, self-defense or any kind of martial art or anything like that is that nobody can ever take that away from you, <laughs> you know, never can. And if, Let's say, God forbid, the worst case scenario happens and it's just, you know, all out apocalypse. I mean, we're talking Mad Max, boom, you know, it's like years and years, no recovery in sight, everything is terrible, civilization is just broken down and we're just, you know, it's, it's just madness. Well, you know, there's not going to be, uh, there's not going to be guns, there's not going to be bullets after a certain point, you know what I'm saying? Like after so many years... You're, it's it's going to be down to being able to defend yourself with your hands and with sticks and, you know, whatever you can come up with, you know, improvised swords or whatever, you know. <laughs> um, so I, I think that's a good reason to, to look into it. But honestly, a better reason to look into it is because, especially if you live in a big city, Right now, I mean, the way the way things are going with society and all that kind of stuff, I mean, chances of you getting jumped, you know, for no apparent reason are kind of getting high. You know, they're, it's going back up. The crime rate was going down for years and years and years and years and years. I mean, decades. And it's, uh, man, it sure seems like it's going back up. If it's not, I'd be surprised um, in the last couple of years if the violent crime hasn't started to tick back up a little bit. It's still lower than most other places in the world. But in the urban center, uh, urban city centers, it's getting up there. So knowing how to defend yourself is great. I personally take uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and that is because I've had quite a bit of training on striking and stuff like that, and I, I just I haven't had much training at all on ground fighting. And so I wanted to learn a little bit about that, grappling and ground fighting. And uh, it's also just a way for me to bond with my son. You know, I think that we need to train our kids to be warriors because, well, I think that at some point they're going to have to be probably. Um, if we aren't in our lifetime, they certainly will have to be in their time. So I try to do what I can to prepare my kids for that. And uh, it's a great way to bond with them and, um, you know, spend time with them and stuff like that. You know, it's real easy in our everyday lives to, to they do their thing and they go play their video games and we go do our things and all that kind of stuff. And having a couple nights a week where we go to the gym together is really cool. You know, it's it's been, been a lot of fun. Okay, number three. And this one's probably going to seem out of place. <laughs> um, networking, you know, networking is a really, really important skill. It's not only an important skill now, uh, which could be, it's highly useful now, you know, um, getting to know people. This is a lost art that most people <laughs> just don't do anymore. And, um, you know, when I, when I became a law enforcement officer, we had this exercise we called the Howdy exercise. And it was basically, we would go into, you know, all civilian clothes and everything like that. And we would go into a bar and we would have, excuse me, uh, you know, the instructor would basically point out, okay, 
you know, Johnson, I want you to go and, and talk to that person over there and see what information you can get. Smith, you go over there, see what you can get from that person. It's just random people. And so our task was to just go strike up conversations with these people and see in, you know, 30 minutes or whatever what we could learn about them. This is a great exercise to do. Um, I, I, re- I really highly uh, recommend that you guys challenge yourself and go out and try to do this. Just try to get to know people intentionally. You know, whether that be your neighbors, whether it be somebody that's in, you know, a group or an activity that you do, you know, on the soccer team or whatever the case may be. Start with somebody somewhat easy, but then work to challenge yourself to do this exercise with in harder and harder environments, you know. And, and after you've done it a little bit, then you definitely need to apply it to your neighbors. If you don't know your neighbors, then you need to know them. You need to spend some time talking with them and stuff. Um, even if there isn't ever any kind of SHTF kind of thing, you know, knowing your neighbors and having a personal relationship with them helps you have a safer environment to live in. Because if anybody's around your house, if they're doing anything with it or anything like that, they're going to let you know, you know. Um, they're going to look out for you just by virtue of them being, you know, having a at least in a friendly acquaintance with them. Um, so I think that's important. I think that can't be overstated enough. I think you can also, and I've talked about this a lot in, in videos lately, I think you can also use this networking thing into starting or developing or getting involved with a prepper group, you know. And I talked probably too much about that and, and how important that is. You know, I think it's it's very, very important. But even after SHTF, networking is going to be another great skill to have because it's going to help you with bartering and help you with trading. And, you know, you know this guy and this guy and you can put them two together and they're going to both be appreciative of that. And you can develop a network of friends who are in that same situation as you and they're going to look out for you, you know. So I, I think that this is a commonly overlooked thing that people really should spend more time on. Okay, number four is animal husbandry. Um, the, the benefit to being able to homestead and raise animals cannot be stated strongly enough. It, it cannot. Um, if you are a person uh, who believes that there is a, a significant economic collapse coming or, you know, an EMP or civil war or whatever the case may be, you really, really should be spending some time learning about and practicing animal husbandry. Um, There's, you know, rabbits are one thing that um, are very often, very frequently overlooked as a great potential meat source. Um, You need to supplement the meat with other things to get additional fat and and vitamins and minerals and all that kind of stuff. But as far as a calorie producing uh, machine, I mean, you know, one mating pair um, can basically have a litter of kits every, what is it, I think it's uh, 21 days. They can get re-impregnated like, like every 21 days. It's ridiculous. And then after that first, you know, litter comes out, those those eight to ten rabbits can be ready to uh, slaughter in like eight weeks. So you can have this rotating, constant, you know, meat production. And the cool thing is, is that the USDA does not classify rabbits as an animal, as a, um, as livestock. So you can have them almost anywhere, you know? I mean, even if your covenants and HOAs and all that kind of stuff say you can't have poultry and farm animals and all this, you can still have rabbits because, it, the, because of the way that the USDA classifies them. Plus, you can put them in, you know, their hutches. They could be in an inside building and nobody, you know, a little shed, like one of them little sheds you can buy, a pre-made shed or whatever. Um, <clears throat> nobody would know you even had them. They don't make any noise. They're easy to do. You can keep them out of sight. And just practicing, you know, that meat production and all that kind of stuff, I think is invaluable. Um, and then you add, you know, one buck and, and a couple of a couple of females, a couple of does or three or four does, 
you can have some serious meat production. I mean, you really can. Now, you have to be able to feed them, but the great thing about rabbits is they'll eat you know, a lot of, of vegetation that you could pick yourself and give to them. Um, you, it wouldn't have to be store-bought stuff, although you could store up quite a bit of store-bought stuff pretty easily because it's pretty cheap. Um, and they just don't eat a lot. You know, they're not very big for the amount of meat production you get. They just don't eat a lot. So, and the, you also have the side benefit of playing into the next item on the list, which is gardening, because the manure from rabbits uh, is basically uh, a fertilizer that you can put right onto the garden and mix into the garden. It's not too hot or anything like that. You can just mix it right in. So that is uh, a huge benefit as well. Okay, so the next one is gardening. Uh, again, gardening... The importance of it is is very very important. Um, you know, we saw the Victory Gardens and stuff like that in World War II. This is an excellent way to supplement calories, but more important than calories, it gives you vitamins and minerals and nutrients and all that kind of stuff that you need to stay healthy. Just eating meat alone is not a real viable long term option. But gardening can be done, obviously, in most backyards and stuff. Even the you know restrictive uh, homeowners associations usually will let you have like a twenty by twenty, you know, or something along those lines. Or the uh, you can have the raised bed options as well, and you can also do uh, like five gallon bucket gardening. I mean, there's tons of different options that you can do. So I highly recommend that you start looking into that, even if it's just growing a few tomato plants. You know something you just you, you need to start growing stuff and try to grow more and more okay so the number six that was number five number six is carpentry um, carpentry is kind of a lost art you know a lot of folks don't know a lot about carpentry or how to do stuff um, but learning about carpentry learning how to use wood cutting tools and uh, especially hand tools and all that kind of stuff could prove to be uh, a very important skill, especially if your plan involves bugging out and having to recreate some sort of hard side shelter, whether that be making a log cabin somewhere or something like that. If you know some basic carpentry skills, that's going to make life a lot easier in that situation. Also, uh, even in an economic collapse or kind of that, that gray area like I was talking about in the video the other day where things are just kind of sliding down, um, you know, building maintenance, you know, uh, buildings may start to become more dilapidated and all that kind of stuff. And you may have to, you know, fix those things yourself because it just, it may be hard to pay other people and stuff. So, uh, that is another option that I think is important. The next one is also one that's probably going to sound kind of funny, but it's sewing. Um, sewing is it's a really important skill to know when you're in when you're living in the outdoors and you're working hard all the time um, your you know clothes rip and stuff like that and um, so being able to repair those is a really really good skill uh, also in a um, same thing in the kind of the gray area when you don't have any money to buy new clothes you get a hole in something you're gonna have to start patching it up that's what we used to do I used to run around with you know Patches on my jeans. I had, man, I remember I had one pair that I think I had five or six different patches on, you know, the pair of jeans. And uh, that was normal. It was no big deal. You know, nobody even questioned it. Now nobody patches anything. Hell, you buy them with whole holes already put in them. <laughs> it's kind of insane. I, I don't really understand it. But anyway, <laughs> I'm not a fashion guy, but it just seems kind of weird to me that we're paying like, you know, $100 for a pair of jeans that have already got holes in them. But uh, so knowing how to sew is important because you may have to take care of your clothing. Also in an SHTF kind of situation, you know, if you have basic knowledge of knowing how to sew, you can, you know, put animal skins together and crap like that, you know, <laughs> uh, if it got to that, God forbid, it never does. But anyway, <laughs> um, so sewing, I think that's number seven. It could be important as well. Uh, obviously, I think bushcraft, uh, fire, water, and shelter, you know, those, those kind of skills, knowing how to survive in the wilderness, knowing how to navigate, um, you know, all those kinds of things are important and that's part of what my channel is about, but it's definitely on the list. Uh, another thing that I think is kind of overlooked and there's, there's starting to become a lot more information out there to learn more about it. And that is solar power, alternative powers, uh, in general, but specifically solar power. Um, you know, knowing how to set up a solar power, power circuit, um, so that you can, uh, charge a battery bank and all that kind of stuff. I think that's really, really useful information to know. 
um, I think we're going to start to see more and more reliance on that down the line. But this this one would also include, you know, small scale hydroelectric stuff. It could uh, small scale wind generation. You know, any of those kind of skills, whatever may be the best for your area. Um, learning about that technology, how to use it, how to wire it, how to set it up, and all that kind of stuff, I think could be really important. Number ten, uh, marksmanship and tactics. You know, um, and I think the first half of it. Basic marksmanship is fine, you know, um, and, and I'm going to kind of add on the spur of the moment here. I'm going to kind of add in archery on this as well. Um, archery is something that you know, if you get good at it now, and you know you had say a couple dozen arrows or whatever, and you know several dozen uh, broadheads, you could hunt for a long time with just that equipment. You can hunt for a long time with it. I've killed. Um, I don't know, probably 10 or 12 deer, um, you know, over the last several years that, um, I don't, I don't think I've bought any new arrows since I started that. Yeah, it's been, it's been several years and I have probably still 80% of the arrows that I, you know, initially had. Sometimes they break, sometimes you lose them, you know, stuff like that, but archery, uh, marksmanship skills could be important. That'll help the longevity of how long you have your arrows and all that kind of stuff. Um, but marksmanship with rifles and ac with rifles, pistols, and shotguns uh, is also important because your accuracy is going to be important. You're not going to just want to pray and spray. When you shoot, you are going to want to be able to hit your target um, because of the av availability of ammunition, the rising expense of ammunition, and all that kind of stuff in a post-collapse environment. I mean, it's going to be like shooting gold down your barrel, so you want to be accurate. Um, but in addition to that, you also want to have good tactics. Um, you're going to be operating in a, in a dangerous environment, and so having good tactics is important. And this isn't just for SHTF. This is probably really more applicable to the gray area, that kind of long, slow slide where you're still having to try to go to work to eke out a little bit of money to kind of support, you know, make your mortgage payments and get some food every month. Um, and, you know, it's just a nasty environment to get out in, you know, because so many people are disenchanted and uh, upset and rioting and all that kind of stuff. Having good personal tactics, the way that, you know, you handle yourself um, and the way that you respond to instances with good self-defense tactics could be critically important. So anyway, guys, that, that's really just a, uh, just kind of a quick primer um, for folks that are maybe just getting into this and they're looking for, you know, what kinds of, of things that they should be studying, what sort of topics should they be spending time on and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, if, if you're like me, you, it's kind of nice to be able to switch stuff up every once in a while. You know, and it kind of gives you a fresh look on things when you come back around to them. So you could take this list, you know, maybe set aside a couple of days to do some some research on this subject, and then you know file that away, and then go away and go to the next one, and then you do that on kind of a rotating basis. I think you'd be um, setting yourself up for failure. Now, this is not an all-inclusive list, obviously. Um, I mean, I can think of a bunch of other stuff like food storage and. I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of different stuff that could be on here, you know, but um, these are just some ones that I thought were worth thinking about that people probably don't uh, think about, but they may be valuable in the long run. So, alrighty, guys. Well, as always, I definitely appreciate when you click the thumbs up button, when you share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And let me know in the comments below what you think the top top 10 skills for disaster preparedness are. I'd be curious to see what your list is. You know, you might be able to come up with one that's better than mine. Um, and as always, don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.